Okay, this one comes from Chris D'Onofrio, who writes, it seems like a lot of people, excuse me, <clears throat> a lot of people feel that the new It isn't scary, and are, are they failing to realize that horror is subjective? Okay, Copster, stop yeah. using fake Twitter <laughs> handles. Oh. <laughs> the first one is a comment that I think would be fun to spin into a question. It comes from Chris D'Onofrio, because he's talking about Skyscraper, mm-hmm. and maybe why it didn't perform as well as some analysts expected. And he said the Skyscraper trailer, for him, gave away the film. He said that that's the reason he didn't go see it this weekend. Mm-hmm. Could that be a factor in the box office that people feel like, hey, this movie looks cool. I like The Rock. I like action movies. But I think I saw the entire movie in the trailer. All right. We move on to <laughs> Kristen Oprio has a question. I think this is more aimed at Jeff. And he says, no. please ask Jeff why he comes on episodes of Movie Talk and gets upset when his opinion is asked on typical movie <laughs> talk topics. <laughs> Uh, the first one we have is from Chris D'Onofrio at Future Boy Chris. Oh, Future Boy. Do you think director Mike Flanagan has any choice but to tie his adaptation of Dr. Sleep to the Shining film, or can he stay completely faithful to King's books? <laughs> um, what's a reboot? This is from Chris D'Onofrio, Future Boy Chris. What's a reboot or remake you'd love to see that others would find sacrilegious? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, God. Ooh. One more question, then we'll get out of here. Kristen Offrio wants to talk Edgar Wright, okay? He says, what do you want to see him do next? What do you want to see celebrated filmmaker Edgar Wright do with his next project? Do you want to see him, A, take another shot at a franchise picture? Do you want to see him, B, make another film with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost? Mm-hmm. Or C, make something completely original? Okay. Uh, Kristen Offrio says, who would you recast... <laughs> In the Ed O'Neill and Rick Moranis roles in a Little Giants remake. I'm not going to make them think that hard today, Chris, but I appreciate the question <laughs> oh, and the annexation of Puerto Rico. I would recast Seth Rogen as R- Rick Moranis. Oh, you're going to do it, okay. Seth, Seth Rogen, and then I would do Michael Shannon. Okay. <laughs> Just going all Michael would, Shannon. See, I would do Seth Rogen as, uh, as the Ed O'Neill role, and for the Rick Moranis role, I would do um, McLovin. McLovin. Yeah, uh, Chris Remitz class. Yes. Yeah, that's that's right. The do. Rock versus Cena. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he's back, everybody. Jeff <laughs> Snyder. Shine <laughs> John Roca. Catch me at the bake sale this Saturday. Okay, Chris Nofrio is up next. He says, now you, you challenge people to buy your cupcakes. He says, now that Solo's <laughs> on home video, Blu-ray, however you want to ingest it, where do you see fandom stance on it in a year? So I'll give it a year from now, mm-hmm. a year from this point in time, Solo, what is the status in the eyes of the fans? He thinks it could reach a beloved cult status, a film that Star Wars fans are actually going to look back with fond memories and rally behind. How- Will you be on the Schmoes No main show more? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I, yeah, all they have to do is ask me. <laughs> that's it. Uh, Chris Dinoff. Hi, Chris, who always does my homework for me and uh, writes the best Twitter questions. Uh... Yeah, thank you for what you said. Having it once a month is better than nothing, and I think that that's a true sign that all the higher-ups at Collider really believe in what it is that we're doing. They know that it's good. They know there's something there, and um, and that's a huge sign of faith. So all we got to do is prove them right and find that audience. So um, I think that's really important. Really good. That comes out this November. Okay. Uh, Kristen Ofrio is up next. Ooh. And Perry, if you if you know the answer to this already, then maybe just try to do your best job of not <laughs> letting us know that we. That is you it know a trivia question? Because now I'm excited. No, but he's asking about horror movies, and he says okay. with Robert Englund recently saying he'd be up for another Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-hmm. Is it something you'd want to see? Uh, for Chris personally, he says, I wish he would have gone out with a Logan style <laughs> ending with uh, Wes Craven's new Nightmare. So, do we bring back Robert Englund for a new? Nightmare I'm not saying Street. anything yet. You, you're not going to say? You go first. No. So we will go to uh, Chris D'Onofrio, and he says, how long before Warner Brothers tries to launch a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe? You'd have Scooby-Doo, the They're Jetsons, working on, no, the, they the are, I, th- th- That is an active development. Thing. One last one. This is from Chris D'Onofrio, and I had to include this, at Future Boy Chris. Uh, in honor of that sweet parka that Roka is wearing, uh, rocking, <laughs> what is your favorite movie scene out uh, in the snow. Mine is Jack and Danny in the maze at the end of The Shining. Ooh, that's so, Chris cool. D'Onofrio is up next and he says, this is somewhat movie related. What are your thoughts on Will Ferrell reviving Ron Burgundy in podcast form? We go back to Funny or Die. Holy crap. Because this, this news broke recently that Will Ferrell is going to be playing Ron Burgundy in a number of podcasts that you can catch through Funny or Die. Uh, Chris D'Onofrio uh, has the next question. He says, if you could see any music video 
on the big screen, what would it be? Wait. He he got to watch Michael Jackson's Thriller in IMAX a few months ago, and he said it was incredible. <sighs> For American Horror Story, Roanoke, I'm sure you guys will have more to say. Yeah. Uh, and now I guess we have to whiz through the rest of our show <laughs> because we're going long. But let's get into our jump scare of the week. Ooh, oh, ooh. Yeah. Creepy. Um, so once again, Collider's Night Collider Nightmares viewer Chris D'Onofrio has done my homework hey, for me. Chris. Thank you, Chris. Um, he asked a question on Twitter that I thought was great. Horror's influence on film, creatively and financially, <laughs> is undeniable. Oh God, look at that. Ray. Black Phillip and a clown. Get out of here. Ray. True nightmares. Um, so he said uh, the, the influence is undeniable, though after a century, it's still the black sheep. Why? Great, great question. That'd be a great team up movie. A literal right. black sheep. Pennywise with uh, a very Pennywise tiny with clown. Black oh, black just black riding clown. the black sheep. Uh, there you go. All right, next up, Chris D'Onofrio, who asks us a ton of great questions. So thank you for sending them. And you guys send questions too, please. Um, anyone watching. Uh, with good directors lined up for the Annabelle and Ouija sequels, are you excited or do you worry about studio interference? So I'm going to start by saying, Chris, I think this is a great example of positive studio interference. I think the idea, you know, I think the first two movies might have could have used a little more studio interference. I don't know what happened on those first two movies, but, you know, new directors. Um, I, actually, both Ouija and Annabelle had first-time directors on those films. Mm -hmm. And now you've got somebody like uh, David F. Sandberg, who clearly Warner Brothers is happy with doing Annabelle. And you have um, uh, Mike Flanagan doing a Ouija 2. So um, I think that this is, this is a great step in the right direction. I'm not nervous at all. Uh, no. Okay, and finally, our friend Chris D'Onofrio asks, What horror film moments from your childhood can you not shake? Zelda from Pet Cemetery haunts me daily. It's so funny you say that because when I read this at our pre-production meeting, Mark Ellis, before I could even say the Zelda part, said, Zelda, definitely. <laughs> so he's right there with you. Um, Right. All right, next up, Kristen Ofrio writes, Do you think that jump scares are still an effective tool as long as there is a legitimate scare involved? Which I think is a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, Riley, you want to start this one? Yeah, I, I think that the jump scares, they are alive and well, if done right. And I believe that they add so much. They're, they're a part of the tool chest that good horror directors utilize because... First up, we've got a question from Chris D'Onofrio. He asks, is there any real-life horror that we're far enough removed from that you'd like to see turned into a film? I will take this one first, and I am going to name drop the documentary Cropsy. Have any of you guys ever seen Cropsy? Cropsy, no. Cropsy no. I've spoken about Cropsy because, as many of you know, I am a sleepaway camp kid, and when you're on the East Coast in particular and you grew up going to sleepaway camp, there's a legend called Cropsy, and my camp in particular, it was always, you know, when the moon turns orange, oh, that's a Cropsy moon, he's going to come and get you, and it's this legend about, Ooh. you know, a killer, a boogeyman-type killer who lives in the woods or wherever you're from, and he'll come out and he'll snatch up kids. Okay, next up, Chris asks, has your taste in horror changed over the years, and if yes, how so? Um, I think this is a great question, mm. and I absolutely know that my taste in horror has changed from what I'm able to see and not be scared by mm -hmm. to what actually gets under my skin and scares me. I think we talked about this before, but like The Exorcist is a great example. Why are you scared of The Exorcist when you see it when you're 12? Because it's freaking scary, and there's it's you know a blood and effects and vomit and head spinning and all that. Why does it scare me now? Watching Karis put his mother, watching Karis watch his mother die, watching a mother who is estranged from her husband lose control over her daughter. I mean, these are the things that actually make this movie compelling to me now. Um, um, yeah, good, good choices, everyone. Um, okay, next up, our friend Kristen Ofrio asks, what was the last movie that actually shocked you? I think I was sweating during the third act of Bone Tomahawk. Uh, that is a great call. Uh, even though I didn't love Bone Tomahawk from top to bottom, the scene that you are referencing, I mean, I was absolutely slack jawed when I yeah. saw what was happening. Crazy. I mean, I've I've never, I've, seen, I've never seen anything like I. I mean, well, obviously things like that exist, and like I'm sure they're in. A, you guys will probably be like, well, actually, in this movie, but, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure I'm you you right. But 
on to our next Twitter question, which I'm going to guess is from Kristen Alfrio. It is, uh, what's the one horror movie you're always pushing on people because you feel like no one's seen it or heard it? And I love this question. And Ryan, you used to make these recommendations to me all the time. Good one from Kristen Alfrio. He says, after Glass, would you prefer M. Night Shyamalan scale it back on his next project? Uh, for Chris personally, he says, I'd like to see another $5 million from him uh, like The Visit was. I think that's the right call. He took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, I want him to do another movie along the lines of The Visit. The Visit was such a nice surprise. And All right, let's move on to this next question. That's from Chris D'Onofrio, at Future Boy Chris. With a Bohemian Rhapsody sequel now in talks, a sequel, could the same audience embrace what's likely to be a less celebratory and more dramatic film? Yeah, because I imagine the sequel would have to pick off... Pick up... <laughs> <laughs> right after, Wait, it, it, in, right in, after Bohemian, in talks, which is him dealing. Is, yeah, there's it's, it's or is it the producers wanting one and that and that's just maybe I've seen it on a couple of news sites that it's in right. talks a sequel possibility here. I guess you'd have to pick up after Live Aid and deal with uh, Freddie Mercury's kind of like uh, battle with AIDS uh, up until he passes away. Moving on over to Chris D'Onofrio because Jeff, I'm wondering if you have an update on this. Chris asks, thoughts on Elizabeth Moss hinting that she's going invisible for Blumhouse and Universal. Is there anything you can share that did you know she, about did that she, project? Did she hint that? All right, this next question comes from uh, good old Chris D'Onofrio, who's asking, with the exception of Jungle Book, the Disney live-action remakes haven't proven to be more memorable than the originals. Will that eventually affect their box office? Oh, uh, that is a great question. Well, I think it's going to hurt this weekend. I am very concerned for Dumbo's opening total here. And uh, This one, first one's from Chris D'Onofrio, at Future Boy Chris. What film do you want a sequel to but will most likely never get? For me, it's The Nice Guys okay. with uh, 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 Russell Crowe and right. uh, Gosling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good old Chris D'Onofrio gave us a great question. Oh, How do you feel about the future of The Conjuring Universe and those helming the next couple of films? That's a great question. Good old Chris D'Onofrio is asking, if you could put the core Avengers cast in any other genre of film, what would it be? Give me a Western. Is that pretty Ooh. much your answer, Roka? All yeah. right. Chris D'Onofrio is asking, do you think we'll see a Doctor Sleep trailer soon? I just... If you guys don't answer yes to this question, it's going to break I, my heart. This has been the talk of the office today, so I'll say yes, absolutely. I want and this And shout trailer. out to your brother, Vincent, Chris. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. One more question, because I think it. this is the best panel to answer this question. Mm. Chris D'Onofrio is asking, most underrated horror film of 2019 so far? He says, The Hole in the Ground. And oh. I, I second nice. that. The Hole in the Ground is quite good. It's underrated. underrated. Yeah,